Hello everyone. I thought I'd make you a little quick editing video today. Uh, I was going through some old images from one of my favorite game reserves in Botswana, which is Mushatu Game Reserve. And I came across an image here, which I thought had a lot of potential. Um, now, unfortunately, as you can see by my shooting settings, I shot this with a 35 millimeter lens. So there was no room to zoom in or zoom out. This is taken from Mashatu's eye level hide. So it wasn't even possible to move backwards in a vehicle because we were, we were sitting in the hide. Um, so for me, it's a little bit tight here on the left and it's, it just doesn't flow. I love the shape of this elephant on the right. And then the second elephant as well here, I think it complements it very well. But unfortunately, these elephants on the left being cut off just don't do it for me. And um, normally when I'm shooting, I'm thinking ahead. Uh, and if I'm seeing a stitch in my head, I will shoot for a stitch. Now this one, I unfortunately did not shoot for a stitch because that would have made life very easy. However, I did go back and find this image, which again on its own is not too great, but we have a very similar perspective. Um, and then we have these elephants, which are quite interesting because of uh, what they're doing here, playing with each other's mouths and things like that. So I thought, why not try and put these images together and see how it comes out. So that's going to be this little video now. Stay tuned. Right. So firstly, this image, I think the color, because it was shot in quite harsh conditions, uh, the color is not so great. So you can see we had overcast skies. Uh, so we're not getting a heck of a lot of blue coming through and it is uh, late winter. So the only real color is this little thin band of green, which in my opinion, it actually takes away from the image rather than adds to it. So the first thing I'm going to do to this image is make it a black and white, take away all those color issues. And then um, I'm just going to add a touch of clarity. So maybe around about that 25 range, somewhere there. Now you see the difference that made in elephant skin. Elephant skin uh, has all this amazing texture. The light is quite nice for texture. Um, and without it, it was a little bit flat, but you can see when we put that clarity in, it's really nice. So that's gonna be my starting point. And then the only other real issue I have with this image because it was shot quite late in the day. Um, when was this? Yeah, it was, it was 20 past 10 in the morning. So it's quite late. The, the sun is quite high. Um, the shadows are very dark. So I'm just going to take the shadow slider and whack it up a lot. Uh, somewhere around about there. You don't have to be too specific with this about 58. And you can see now you're getting this really nice detail in the shadow side of the elephant. There is still shadows in the image, but now we have this really nice contrasty, um, sharp skin with lots of texture and you can see into the shadows a lot nicer. So that is all I'm really going to do for this first image, except for I am going to just crop it. Well, not crop it, just straighten it a little bit. So I feel like the horizon's a little bit skew. I want to straighten up those elephants feet, something like that. Right now, to get the settings exactly the same in uh, this image here, I am just going to right click on the first image, go down to develop settings, copy settings, and then you'll see you have all of this come up. I'm going to copy everything except for the crop. Um, I'm going to align or straighten that second image uh, myself. I don't want Lightroom to do that because again, I shot it. I think I even moved. I walked a couple of spaces down in the hide to shoot the second image. It's not shot from the exact same place. So if I let Lightroom crop it to the same perspective as the first one, it's going to get it wrong. So now that I've copied those settings, I'm going to right click on the second image, image, go to develop settings, paste settings. And now you can see we have two black and white images, which are pretty much exactly the same uh, brightness, texture, all of that good stuff. Now you can see, being on the side of the of the water hole here, my angle is quite uh, quite wonky. Um, it's it's really something that I don't like, so I need to fix that horizon. Now the easiest way to do that is into the crop tool. So it's this one up here for you guys who are uh, new to Lightroom, or you can push button R. I'm assuming R is for rotate. 
not for crop, but it is what it is. And then by simply hovering just outside the corner, you'll see I'll get these two little arrows. I can click and drag, and then by dragging down, I can straighten this horizon. So I'm essentially turning the image. Now to me, just eyeballing it, the back of that waterhole now looks a lot more level. I could even go a touch more, something like that. So that's looking a lot more level than what it was before. Now if I look and compare it to the first image, you can see this one probably needs to be straightened the opposite way. So I'm trying to line up that uh, this main elephant's two feet. So a nice straight line between these two feet and then the back of the water hole, even though you can't really see it because we've only got the corner, which is going to do us a favor later, is hopefully going to be straight as uh, as straight as the second image. Right, so once I'm happy with that, I'm going to hit OK. Now the one thing I'm going to check before I do anything, so basically I'm going to take this image, I'm going to take the first elephant here, I'm going to take the second elephant, this one's going to go because I'm going to use the other elephant from this shot. What I want to make sure is because I shot these so far apart, these images, uh, so one's 4,014 shot and the other one is uh, 3,906. So there's a, there's a big difference in between these shots. I was not shooting them together. Um, these, this was a, a, an afterthought. Why is this one so skewed now? Oh, sorry, I've cropped both together. Let me just go and fix that quickly. Right, we're back. Sorry, so unfortunately before I had both images selected when I re-cropped the second image, which threw this one out completely. Right, so what I'm basically looking at is I'm going to get rid of this elephant from the final image and I'm going to use uh, this one in its place. But what I'm worried about is because I focused on this one originally, which was so close, and then on the second image, I, you can see I've refocused a second time on this elephant, is my fear is the foreground and background are not going to match it blur wise. So um, I've shot it at a 35 mil lens and it shot at f6.3. But if we look at these backgrounds side by side, you can see the first image background is a lot softer than the second one. So that's the first one, here's the second one. The second one is a lot sharper because that focal distance has changed or the focus distance has changed while I've shot the second image, uh, more of that background has come into focus. So I need to kind of fix that, otherwise it's gonna be very obvious in the final shot. So you can get very technical with cutting out and editing and masking in Photoshop, but I'm going to try and do a little bit of that pre-game here in Lightroom because the new Lightroom uh, tools are so good. So I'm going to take the second image, which is the sharper background. I'm going to take this into the develop module by hitting button D. I'm going to go up here into the masking options and I'm going to click on select subject. Now I'm hoping this is going to select all one, two, three, four, four, five elephants. One, two, three, four, five elephants. I'm seeing that middle is very confusing. So five elephants, and it looks like it did a pretty good job there. So if I turn on the overlay, you can see there everything in red has been highlighted uh, and everything that is not red is being ignored from the selection. Now, I want to soften the background. So this is a little bit of a problem because now the elephants are highlighted. Well, the nice thing with Lightroom is it has this very clever button here called invert. And when I hit that, you'll now see that everything but the elephants has been selected, which is awesome. Now the problem is, as you can see, big gray blobs on a, a gray background. Let me turn that off quickly. Uh, you can see it's done a pretty good job at selecting the elephants. I'm not too worried about the sky because the sky doesn't have any detail that we're trying to blur. So the selection on the top of the elephants is not too much of a problem. Where it does need a bit of a cleanup is these legs and the trunks. So obviously we want to get rid of the selection now off the elephants and make sure this background where these trees are is nicely selected. 
So what we can do is we can click on this subtract button over here. So it's again, it's part of our mask subtract and I'm going to use the brush. Now, when you click and move this brush, you can see anywhere you paint, it is deleting it from the selection that we've already made or that the program made. So that is really cool. If I hit uh, command Z, I can undo a uh, one mistake. And what I'm going to do, uh, let's just get bit that back. So I'm going to just paint a tiny little section on this trunk, which applies um, this over here. And then I'm going to name it. I'm going to name it subtract. I can use another little brush called the add brush. So let's just add one here, which will add back to the selection. So I'm going to paint a little bit so that it's now sitting up here. I'm going to rename it add so I know what I'm looking for. And now I have subtract and add sitting there. Right. So now I've got my subtract on. I'm just going to come over to the parts where I don't want to blur at all. And we can try also with our auto mask turned on. That'll hopefully stay within the lines and not go over them too much. So it won't jump to the background. What I'm worried is the difference between the background and the foreground are quite similar in tone um, so that it might jump a little bit. It's doing a pretty good job at the moment. There we go. Let's take it off this trunk as well. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because I'm going to apply a little bit of blur to the background. Remember this, these trees are a lot sharper than the other trees. So I need to be able to blur those a little bit to make the whole image a little bit more seamless. Otherwise, when you put the two images together like this, there's going to be a big cut line down the middle where you have soft trees in the background and sharp trees. And it's going to be very obvious to the naked eye when you come back and look at it. Right. So I'm going to quickly do this. I'll speed it all up for you so you don't have to sit through this and watch me painstakingly paint over some elephant's feet. And we'll be right back. Right, so I've deleted most of the elephant. Uh, some of it's neater than others. I'm not going to take too much time on this because um, I don't think it's that important to be fair on this example. Um, and now I can see that there's just because I've done these types of things a few times, there's some very light red on the edges. So you see here, the background is almost selected. So now I'm going to click my add brush again. I'm going to have auto mask on. And I'm basically going to go and do the same thing, but in between the elephant's legs uh, to make sure that everything on the sides is highlighted nicely. Now, I don't care about this elephant because remember, this elephant is going in the original or in the combined image. So that's why I'm not worrying about that elephant there. These gaps are so small. I don't think you'll notice them in the final picture, but they're also so small that you just might be very obvious. So let's do those quickly. And there we go. That's looking pretty good. Something like that. Right. So now that we've painted over those, let's get rid of the overlay. So now we can see what the effect is now. Uh, my brush has some loaded in settings here, so I'm just going to double click on effect and that'll get rid of those. The overlay will come back, um, which is fine because as soon as we part st start putting settings in, it'll disappear. Now, what we're trying to do, remember, is soften those trees in the background. So by taking the sharpness down and let's take it down to. I'm just going to guess about minus 50 ish. Maybe a little bit more 55. 55 is probably a little bit too much. Well, that was 60, 58, somewhere in here. So you see now the, the trees in the background are nice and soft. And now you can see where the mask didn't quite work. So I'm just going to click on the add button again and just come in and carefully paint in these areas next to the trunk. I'm going to turn auto mask off this time. Uh, that just allows me to get a smaller brush a little bit closer to the trunk without it, the program sort of getting confused and trying to jump around. So here up into here, 
we see there's a big one here we missed even with the overlay on it looked like it was selected but it definitely was not coming over here nice and close just softening all of these branches in the background now again let's speed this up right so now we should be done with this i'm just going to compare these two images again so control click both of them or command if you're on a mac hit button c for compare now the area where i'm assuming i'm going to cut between these images is going to be between these two here so i'm going to zoom in into this area and this is the part i'm looking for now on the compare images i don't want to compare five five legs that's not going to help me so by holding down shift, you can click and drag on the image you want to move, and then you can move it to a place where you can compare nicer the area you're looking for. Now, as you can see, the blur is a lot better, but there is this funky noise, which is actually on the original shot, which we don't have on the, the new one where we've blurred the background. So we just need to remember that for later when we put it into Photoshop, I'll probably need to apply a little bit of noise just to make it match a little bit nicer right so i'm going to take these two images now i'm going to send them over to photoshop so by highlighting both of them and hitting control or command on a mac and e it will pop them over into photoshop for us and then we can start putting them together right so now that we're in photoshop i'm just going to turn on my key button again here so that you can see when i push buttons to see what i'm pushing uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make this image a little bit smaller. This is the one that's going to be uh, added onto the left. So we can actually, let's command or control A and then copy all of that. And then we can actually close it down. So I have it copied. I don't need it anymore. I don't want to save any changes because we didn't make any. So we just hit no. And then I'm going to paste that into this uh, at this side so this is going to be my one that's not going to move too much because the elephant doesn't have that much space around it where it can move or be moved around the scene so this one's going to be uh, the first image we paste into so we need to make the canvas bigger so essentially we're making a little panorama uh, but if we paste the image straight onto here they're the same size the same shape we're not going to be able to make it um, or we're not going to have any areas that we didn't have before being visible. So what we need to do, sorry about that, you hit Control alt c or Command-Alt-C uh, on a Mac, and that is going to open up the canvas size um, box here. Now what we want to do is all the space wants to be on the left, so we click these arrows, I'm going to click the right arrow, now you can see it's pointing to the left so the new space is going to come into where essentially these open spaces here are and i'm going to click on here and go percent and then on width let's make it 200 percent and now as you can see it's made this whole image basically double in width so now when we paste this image Control v we're pasting the new image we can paste it side by side we've got extra room which is fine let's zoom in a touch and now there we're roughly in the ballpark so what i'm going to do is i'm going to grab the move tool which is button v i can grab this layer and i can move it around and i want to overlay it roughly uh, so that the back side of this elephant is lined up with the back side of itself which is over there but unfortunately I can't see. So the way we can get around this, in the move tool, instead of having to come and change the opacity over here in the slider, we can just hit the number keys. So if we hit 10, that's 10% 10 opacity, 2, 20, 3, 30, etc. So by clicking on about 50, so 50% 50 opacity, we can see here where we can line up these two shots. Now I'm gonna zoom in for this. It's less the elephants that I'm worried about lining up. It's more the surface of the waterhole. So I, I want to be able to see roughly where these feet are so that I can make a nice clean line between the two. But it's kind of more the waterhole which I want to line up nicely. So it's somewhere around about there. I'm going to hit button zero. Now zero brings the top layer back to 100% opacity. 
Control or Command Zero makes the image uh, sort of fill your screen, so you can see the whole thing now. And if we turn on and off this layer, so over here, this little eye icon. So if we click that on and off, you can see where the new image is going to be overlaid. So I'm pretty happy with that. Let's move that over there. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to crop off some of this unwanted space just because it's, it's going to be quite a large file. So button C for crop gives us the crop tool. I'm going to clear all the settings in here. I'm going to drag it in, leave myself a little bit of space to play with if I want it. Drag it down the bottom and crop it away just so I can see a little bit nicer. I don't have that. So when I hit control zero, it's going to fill the screen with this rather than filling the screen with a whole bunch of uh, unused space. Now what I want to do is on this top layer, I want to hide this elephant and show the elephant in the background. Now the best way to do that is with a layer mask. So the layer mask icon is this one down here, the little uh, circle with a square. So that little one there. So make sure your top layer, which is the layer you want to hide, is selected. Click on that and you can see absolutely nothing happened. Now, what the way a layer mask works is where you apply black, you hide things and where you have white, you show things. So with a brush and Photoshop is a lot more logical with its keys. Uh, B is for brush this time, not K in, like in Lightroom. If you take a black brush and paint into the mask, you hide the layer that the layer mask is on. If you make a little mistake and you realize, whoopsie, we wanted that uh, piece that we just deleted, we simply make a white mask and we can paint it back in. So layer masks are super handy. It's one of the most used things in Photoshop. They are really good. And that is why, because instead of erasing something with the eraser, because it is an eraser tool over here, which I do not recommend using. If you erase something and you erase something over here and then you erase something over here, if you want to go back and fix the original one, you have to go back all of the steps in between because it's a destructive editing tool. Whereas the layer mask is not destructive. Uh, you simply paint black and white as many times as you want and it'll take away or show the thing that you are trying to get rid of. Uh, right, so now I want to zoom in here. Remember, we want to show this elephant. So I want to paint black onto the top layer. And then this other elephant we also want gone because I really liked the pose of the second one, which was in the original shot. I just like the way her trunk and her foot is on that angle. It kind of makes the image flow through the center of the picture towards the other elephants. Um, I don't know if you guys see that as well, but in my head, that's, that's why I thought these shots would work well, so well together. So I'm going to paint away everything under this elephant here. Now I'm using a small soft brush. So if I just make a new layer, this is what my brush looks like. You can uh, have a very hard brush and your brush softness and size, if you don't know how to do them, size is up here, hardness and softness is up here. So a very hard brush is going to have these very jagged edges and a very soft brush which is if you come and take your hardness all the way to the left, is going to have these nice soft edges. Now again, I like to do things um, with keys. It's a lot, a lot easier for me. So the large square brackets, let's turn on that. So large square brackets is going to make the brush bigger. This, the large uh, left square bracket is going to make the brush smaller. And then if you hold down shift and that same large square bracket, you can make it a hard edge. Or if you do shift and the left bracket, you can make it a soft edge. Right. So now that we've hidden this first piece, I'm just going to blend out that sky a little bit as well. And the one very important thing is to make sure that you're always, when you're painting in a layer mask, to be painting in the actual layer mask. If you accidentally paint on the layer, you're going to have white and black on the layer. So an important little tip there. So again, I've got my black brush. I just want to blend in that sky a touch. That's looking a bit better. I just want to make that little connection with the water a little bit smoother there. 
Also with the brush, to change the opacity, uh, you can just hit the normal uh, one through zero controls again. So if I have pushed button zero, it's at 100% opacity. It'll get rid of it 100%. Five is 50%, 10 or one is 10%. So you see, I can, then you can work in how much you delete things. So with that little aside, so I'm working with 100% opacity brush up here to delete these pieces. You see there's a little edge there joining. And then, oops, just to bring back that little edge there, I want to work with a little bit lower opacity. So just by painting black and white, we've basically merged these two images together really nicely. Now I want to zoom in and make sure the cut between this elephant and the background, there's nothing weird going on, like whatever that is. I have a feeling this might be elephant number two's bum. Yes, it is. So I just want to paint in with the edge of the soft brush. Now remember white again, because we're bringing back that layer. So now we're just getting rid of that outline of that elephant and we're bringing in more of that background sky. Right, that's looking pretty good. Now. You can see here what I was talking about before. So this little area has a certain amount of noise. And then this area, because we blurred it with Lightroom, doesn't. So we almost need to put back in some noise here. So you see there's noise there on the new image, no noise. So what we can do easily for that is click on, so off the layer mask now onto the actual layer, come up to filter, noise, add noise. Now most people think why on earth would you ever want to add noise? Well, this is why. And we're going to go for a very low opacity or sorry, amount, probably somewhere in the three ish range. And we're, we're eyeballing it. Let's actually come up to the sky It'll be easier. So we're eyeballing the amount of noise here. And hopefully on YouTube, you can see the amount of noise here versus here. So let's get to an area where we can see the trees and we can see the sky. Now, that is way too much because now we have noise here and no noise here. So I'm just going to click this down. Let's see how we're going here. No, we're still way too much. Let's get down to about the two range. So the two range is looking good in the trees, uh, but a little bit too much on the sky. So let's come down a little bit more. And there's looking pretty good. So just under two, 1.9. It's not looking too bad. Okay, so obviously we're not going to uh, leave it with these big black weird shapes. So I'm just gonna come in now again with the crop tool. I'm gonna do crop it up to the bottom of this black piece here. Crop it down. I'm not gonna crop it down to there because you can see I'm gonna chop off my elephant's ear. I'll show you get around that in a minute. So we'll leave the top one and then we'll crop off the black piece on the left. Hit enter. So now we've basically got three, well, nine tenths of a, of a nice looking image. Now, before we do anything to the sky, I just wanna come in and look how this foreground's looking. So you see nice and out of focus here. The water on this elephant is actually sharp because the focal plane is very sharp here. So I need to fix that. And then this uh, is nice and is almost soft. So what I kind of need to do is blur this little piece here, or we can come in with our layer mask one more time with the brush. And I'm actually going to use, so you see there, we can kind of hide it. That was way too strong of a brush though. So let's use about a 50% opacity brush. Even that I think was too strong. Let's go 30, 30% 30 opacity and just take away a little bit of that sharpness. So we're still, by using 30% opacity, we still got some of those shadows which come from the trunk, which are necessary, but we've just taken away the sharpness of that water, which blends better with the rest of the water on this image. Right, so now we need to just fix our sky and we're pretty much there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make these two layers into one layer. Now I like to leave my layers when I uh, intact when I use Photoshop, because if I come back in a couple of years time, uh, and I know I will because 
I've missed a little patch of feet down here which uh, on the blur which I will want to fix later. Um, so if I come back later, uh, you know, it could be a month, it could be a week, it could be tomorrow, it could be tonight. If you flatten everything into one image and send it back to Lightroom, you cannot edit those uh, layers separately anymore. Whereas if I leave all my layers intact when I send it back to Lightroom, I can come back and work on those individual layers again, which is very important. So I want to merge these two layers together to make a new sky for that corner, but I don't want only one layer. So what I'm going to do is hit Control Shift Alt E and whoops, you need to be on the top layer for this to work properly. So again, Control Shift Alt E and what that basically does is it takes everything from that layer and below and makes it into a new layer and puts that on top. So if I do that now, you can see we have three layers. So I can turn that off. So here's one layer, two layers. And if I turn them both off and just turn the top on, there's both of them now together. Now, why this is important is because if we want to put this new sky in, I'm going to take the marquee tool, which is a square, um, square dotted line tool up here. If you're seeing a round one, you can just long click on it to get to the rectangular one. I'm just going to hover over here. So hovering over the black space, and then I'm going to hit shift and backspace. Now that's going to bring up a little dialog box like this. You just have to make sure that the top one says content aware, and then we hit enter. And what that's going to do is it's going to look at the rest of the image, pretty much figure out it is a sky and it's going to make us a new sky. And how good was that? And there we pretty much have it. So we have this brand new, uh, quite nice looking panorama. Uh, coming from two images which were not shot with stitching in mind at all. Uh, so I think it turned out pretty well. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments down below. And one last thing, obviously we need to get this back into Lightroom. Uh, for you guys who don't know Photoshop and Lightroom that well, um, they talk to each other very nicely. So all we have to do is close this image. So I'm going to hit Control W or Command W, closes it. Or you can hit this little X up here. When it says, do you want to save changes? You must hit yes. If you click no now, all your hard work is gone. Uh, so don't click no, click yes to changing saves, saving changes. And as you can see, now our new image has popped up into Lightroom. Uh, it's made a new copy and put it in here. And it's just sitting there with the two originals, which is really cool. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video on my Mashatu image. Uh, admittedly, when I first saw these pictures, I didn't know what I was going to do with them. I liked them both, but um, they both weren't good enough as an image by themselves. So I'm glad they work so nicely together like this. Now, if you would like to join me at Mashatu and go into this amazing eye level hide, we run a number of set date workshops, which you can see in the link down below. We also run private safaris there where it'll be just you guys and myself on the vehicle making the most of this incredible photographic destination. I'll leave you guys with some of my favorite images from the reserve. And until next time, happy shooting. Bye.